counted. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of Solo TV 84. I'm your gracious host, Solomon Jones. And it's every day, bro, I pray my cryptos grow. Pray to the crypto gods. Let Irene come in. We got a special guest, Irene, a vet in the building. Uh, Irene, go ahead and introduce yourself to the crowd, please. Hi, um, I'm Irene Vet. Um, I have a channel here on YouTube called Irene Vet. <laughs> All right. Now, a lot of you may already recognize Irene. She's been in the O'Shea Duke Jackson hangout. She's <laughs> already been in the in the trenches, going back and forth with people, and uh, already talking about controversial topics. But this is her first time here on Solo TV 84, so we do appreciate her. Uh, make sure you guys subscribe to Irene's channel as it looks right now on the screen. Um, if you have any questions, please super chat it. And moderators, moderators, you have my permission tonight to time out people with extreme prejudice, okay? It, for some reason, Irene, when she makes videos, the trolls come out, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, Irene, let's get straight into it. Um, you are a controversial figure. What made you decide you know, to start making YouTube videos and how would you describe your YouTube content? Um, okay, well, what provoked me to make YouTube videos uh, was a video I saw uh, with a nursing mother and a father and just their animosity toward their child, but more um, just the struggles that the mom was having. And uh, I thought, oh, I'll, I'll make a video on this. <laughs> And then um, people started to ask me questions, so I started to make videos on other things. And then eventually I just, you know, started making videos on things that um, people approached me with and things that I thought were important. I haven't even tapped into the videos I'd like to make yet, but that's kind of how I got started and what kind of content I put up. Okay. One thing I noticed about you is you have what I like to call um, fair and balanced political content and typically uh you know let's keep it real um irene when you see a lot of youtubers and particularly female youtubers they come more from a democratic point of view. um but you you said in, in the o'shea stream and correct me if i'm wrong that you're not conservative would you consider yourself independent or are you conservative um i don't i consider myself just a middle ground person and i do lean heavily conservative Okay. Now, when you started making um, some of the political commentary, um, were you ever afraid? Okay, because you know you are a businesswoman, uh, entrepreneur. From what I gather, from you know having listened to you in other um, live streams, were you ever worried about? Oh my gosh, what if somebody sees this that I know and they're like, "Oh, Irene, I didn't know you thought this way," or did that not cross your mind? Yeah, it didn't cross my mind because I have some pretty uh, different views on a whole lot of things. And most people that know me know that about me. <laughs> so um, I half of what I think is not on YouTube. So I, I wasn't worried about shocking anybody because I'm a very consistent person in real yeah. life and what I present here on YouTube. Okay, that's what's up. And shout out to King Nick with the first donation. He said, what up from 30K feet in the air? Hey, King Nick, man, we always appreciate you. He's a young entrepreneur uh, in his 30s, already retired. We, you know, we like having good people like that in the community, Irene, because it shows people who are motivated, you know, retired by the age of 30. So shout out to King Nick. 1234 play, I appreciate that. That will go into the um the the drinking fund, uh, <laughs> the beer fund, the Brett Kavanaugh beer fund tonight. You know what I'm saying? We're having beer on Brett tonight. So we'll we'll get into that more in a second. Um, Irene, one thing I wanted to talk to you about today is um, dating. Now, I know you are dating currently, um, but what is your opinion in regards to relationships in this modern era in regards to social media? What are your thoughts about dating? Um, well, if in regard to social media, I don't particularly like social media. I don't engage in social media. I just think media in general stupefies people. Um, I think it builds narcissism and it also promotes passive engagement and it makes you delusional about reality. So um, I think with augmented realities, 
you lose touch with like actual reality. You start to think more people share your views than really do. You start to think your behavior is normal because um, uh, social media augments what you see and the people you engage with and what they introduce you to based on your personality. So it has nothing to do with like the broader picture. It just has to do with you. So your, your experience is literally a reflection of who you are. You're more looking in a mirror than you're looking at anything true or real. Um, and, you know, with regard to dating just in modern times, I think it's a clusterfuck. Like, honestly, you know, people are so twisted and demented. They have so many weird views. They have no sort of um, touch. They're not in touch with, you know, proper gender roles. They're not in touch with, you know, what, what should and shouldn't be done in a relationship. They're very self-centered. They totally miss the point of engaging another person in a romantic relationship. They're very based in their thinking. They're very much led by their penises and vaginas. It's just a mess. It's, it's very hard if you are a healthy-minded, rational thinking individual to find a partner, to be quite honest. Mm, definitely. Now, Irene, one of the things that I hear a lot of men complain about, and I'm pretty sure you hear the same thing from maybe some of your single girlfriends, is they partake in online dating, which I think is trash, um, particularly Tinder. Um, do, have, do you have any experience with online dating or do you have any stories about your friends with online dating? Because I'm pretty sure we all have a horror story. What is your opinion, Irene, on online dating? Um, particularly Tinder? Well, I've never been on Tinder, but I've definitely heard of it. It sounds like a hookup application to me. Uh, my opinion on online dating is that it's kind of, it's, it's kind of a dangerous situation, right? Because in the online world, and I've experienced this more as I've been engaging in YouTube, people get behind a computer and get a, you know, a, a camera phone, and then they just start acting retarded and presenting themselves as something they're not. And so I feel like whilst in one regard, it kind of opens up the pool of individuals you can talk to, the number of sane, rational, like thinking people who are engaging in that are very small. Um, I think it's kind of, I think Tinder is probably from what I've heard of it, the most honest kind of online dating, which is you're just really there to hook up. You're not there to have any depth. You're not there because you're looking for any sort of amazing person. You've just kind of accepted everybody as kind of mediocre and basic and you just <laughs> are interested in sex and you know cheap dates. And so I think from what I've heard of Tinder, it's probably the most honest form. I think it's probably more nefarious when you have people who are looking for something serious coming into a pool where people are just very deceptive about where they stand because they're hoping to get all the things that people are more open about on, or maybe it's not tender. Is it like plenty of fish? I don't know. I can't keep up with them all, but you know what yeah, I mean? Plenty of fish, POF. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's more nefarious when you have people that are honestly thinking it's online dating and not online hookup. Cause I think that's more like what it is. Mm. Excellent point, Irene. Excellent point. Hold on. Ladies and gentlemen, for those who are just joining us now, welcome to Solo TV 84. I'm here with Irene Avet and Ill Wills. Shout out to you with the donation. He says, love the breaking down of videos like John Madden, watching football games, keep them on their toes, Solo. Yes, sir. I try. I try. I mean, you guys know me. Real talk is all I know. Um, now, here's the, the thing, Irene. With modern dating, as a single guy who dates a lot himself, there's a lot of men that struggle with dating to the point now that you have men who um, are either opting out of dating or hiring dating coaches. What What are your thoughts? Have you ever heard of pickup artists, PUAs? Have you ever heard of that term? Uh, I've not heard of that term. Is that just like basically a dating coach, somebody that teaches you to get women for what sex well, or dating? Yeah, so pickup artists were very big in the mid 2000s, around 2000, early 2000s till uh, maybe 2013. Well, around 2013, that's when Midtown kind of took over. But you know, dating coaches, um, Irene, basically these are um, guys that teach men how to talk to women, how to be social, how to um, uh, let's keep it real, how to get in between a woman's thighs and 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 whatnot. However, with a lot of the, the the pickup artists, you know, they were doing things like boot camps, charging men, you know, three grand or something like that to meet women. And then a lot of men decided, you know what, this is a scam, this and that. I guess my question to you is because, you know, in some of your videos, you talk about that you're traditionalist. 
Um, does that shock you at all that men are now resorting to learning how to talk to women because of the dysfunction between men and women in regards to dating, particularly communication? When you look at the younger generation, like the millennials and Generation Z, who tend to text a lot more, and so they don't have the basic social skills or etiquette skills where they can communicate. And nowadays as well, um, a lot of men have fear to approach women because of Me Too. And I know that's a lot to unpack, Irene. Uh, but yeah, what, what are your thoughts on dating coaches? And, and I can bring up the rest in a moment here, of course. Yeah, as far as dating coaches, um, there's one, there's a video I plan to make on the in the future about a dating coach that's here on YouTube. And his focus is just getting women into bed. This is what I think. I think that our society really suffers from um, individuals who don't know how to behave as men nor women. And I think dating coaches just teach broken people how to hook up and not create successful relationships with other broken people, which then feeds into a cycle of men not really liking women that much and women not really liking men that much. So then men only wanting women for sex because they don't really like them, but they really, really like vaginas. Um, and women wanting men for money because they don't really want to be bothered with men, but they've kind of got it in their mind that men are good for that. So when I think of, you know, dating coaches, um, people that teach, you know, individuals how to pick up women and things like that, I think it's just the the blind leading the blind. Do you know what I mean? Just because somebody can tell you how to take advantage of a person with a set of rules that work on weak-minded people who aren't of good quality doesn't mean you've actually learned anything um, that's beneficial to you or is going to better your life. It might get you laid. It might make you a walking, you know, AIDS epidemic or, you know, a, an STD factory or STI, whatever they're calling them this, these days. But um, I don't mm -hmm. think it's going to help you develop a healthy relationship with anybody of the opposite sex. So I would really frown upon that. I don't think you need a dating coach as much as people need to learn how to be um, sensible human beings that seek out like-minded individuals. <clears throat> mm. Now, but Irene, in, in all fairness, and we'll get into this in, in a moment, uh, you do have men, Irene, who are socially awkward, who have anxiety, they don't know how to talk to women. I mean, and these men have good intentions, but because they are not socially savvy or smooth, um, they don't know how to talk to women. I mean, isn't it fair that for some men who struggle genuinely, with meeting women, attracting women, that um, if they choose to pay for a service or a dating coach who will teach them the, the proper steps or guidelines on how to approach a woman, respectfully, of course, that that may be a good thing? Um, I would say no. And, and this is why, because um, you don't want to have to, you want to bring yourself to the table and have the person that chooses you choose you because the way that you are, they're comfortable with. So I actually know a really, well, his wife died of cancer um, last year, but I, I know, I knew a really odd couple. He was a mathematician. He had to be like six foot seven, um, heavy set, very socially awkward, um, big, a big giant and scary to look at, but just sweet as cream. And he had a little itty bitty five foot two inch wife with a uh, really big breasts. And she was, you know, um, really into linguistics. And they were just two odd people, two intellectual, weird people, perfectly suited for each other. And she loved getting little mathematical notes from him as love notes. She totally got it. She loved those quirky things about him. She loved, you know, who he was as a person. And I think what we need to seek is not, you know, how can I approach just random women and get them to connect with me? But how do I seek out somebody who in all of my awkwardness, because awkwardness is subjective. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's better to be socially awkward, quite frankly. If you're too socially adjusted in this screwed up society, oh, you're on, probably Irene. doing the wrong thing. Come on, Irene. You, we both know that socially awkward men are, are considered creeps or creepers by most women. And well, um, most women are trash. So I don't know that it matters. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? Like, here's the thing. It's not about numbers, right? It's mm -hmm. not about numbers. It's about quality. So, so what you, 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 you shoot, you get shot down by a, a bunch of women who may get your penis hard, but really aren't worth, you know, the ground that you spit on. The, mm -hmm. the thing is that you need to get that one woman 
who actually likes you. Now, some people are just weirdos, okay? I'm not talking about a weirdo. I'm talking about you have a unique personality because you're an individual and individual people with unique personalities are normally considered socially awkward. When people talk to me, if I, if I weren't somewhat attractive to some people, most people think I'm socially awkward. A lot of people think my views are very, you know, out there. They've never heard anything like that before. Um, and I think I prefer to be around people who are that way, people who think for themselves, who have their own personalities, who aren't a cookie cutter image of everything that society tells us is appropriate. And people like that should seek out others like them who will appreciate them for their quirkiness. The guy I date is totally socially awkward on many levels. And I love him to pieces. I, I've been with him for a while. He's amazing. I think you should seek out people who appreciate you for who you are. And if that's not, you know, if that's one out of a hundred women, then get the one that's good and skip over the trash. I mean, most people, I, I don't want to come down on society, but most people are super base. So, so you, you got to decide what you want. You, are you trying to get into bed with somebody? Are you just trying to have dinner with somebody? You want somebody who's going to love and appreciate you for who you are. Okay, certainly. And by the way, uh, moderators, like I said, if they troll and you know what to do, um, we got Irene Vet here in the building. Now, Irene, um, I get where you're coming from, but I, I do have to disagree because me personally, and the reason why I say me personally, I was what you would call a square, Irene, okay? I was the guy that, you know, went to church. I was a mama's boy. And, you know, on first dates, Irene, yes, I was the guy who would show up with roses. That was me. I've done it. I was the guy that would wear a suit and tie on the first date. That was me. And I kept um, failing with women. And I didn't know why. I was oblivious. And really, Irene, um, you know, I, and I have a long story. So let me just fast forward. But after there were two women, Irene, and I can tell you exactly when this happened, January of 2008 and March of 2008. And so long story short, there were two women, and I'll just say, say the story real quick. Uh, one woman came to my birthday. I was totally smitten with this woman. And of course, it was my birthday at the time, my, my 22nd birthday. And uh, long story short, Irene, I had one too many beers. <clears throat> and I professed my love to this young lady, Irene, and she shut me down and, and said she didn't feel the same way. Lady number two was different. She was a beautiful woman. Um, you know, she came into my house. Uh, we slept on a twin bed together. Now we didn't have sex, Irene. That's, he's the, that's the funny part. We didn't have sex. Um, long story short, I was a square. So, so here's the thing, Irene, what I'm trying to say is um, me, I, I didn't, look at a dating coach per se, but I wanted to know why um, women kept putting me in the thing known as the friend zone. And I realized uh, after, you know, looking over certain material is because I was too, um, let's keep it real, I was too nice. I wasn't aggressive enough or assertive enough. And once I became more confident as a man in assertiveness, then certain things happened for me. So I guess the point I'm trying to say, Irene, is Certain people learn differently. I mean, you know, what you're saying, I I don't disagree with, but for me, if I didn't learn to become more assertive, I, I might still be in the friend zone nine times out of 10 right now. Wouldn't you agree? Well, that's so funny because I actually did a video on nice guys, right? And I do agree with you that um, nice guys actually can win because everything that, that you mentioned sounds flipping awesome to me. Like I would have dated you. <laughs> do you know what I mean? My guy's like that. That's why I'm with him. But he also has like, he takes no BS for me. Do you know what I mean? So he's got all those nice guy qualities, but he is very assertive. He he is very you know manly. He puts his foot down, but he's ultra ultra sweet. And I think um, nice guys have an advantage because if you just bring out that manhood um, alongside all of those really beautiful qualities um, that women really do like, then you do get a lot further with women. If you are just have no masculinity about you, but you're really nice, it's kind of like hanging out with your girlfriend. So you need to bring the masculinity and the niceness too. But I don't know that this is a dating coach situation. I think this is more like a flaw in society sort of situation in that um, it is very common for men to lack 
the masculine side of things, but be very in touch with the more feminine side of things. Mm. And so that can be, um, that can be really dicey, but you don't need a dating coach to tell you that. This is a one lesson dating coach lesson, okay? Just act like a guy. Do you know what I mean? Keep your niceness, keep your sweetness. And in the same breath, when a woman tries to press you or test you, put her in her place and you'll, and you will win every single time because we want both things. Just like men want a woman that's submissive and knows how to take instruction and is, is not argumentative, but they also want somebody that can be sexy and saucy. Do you know what I mean? And bring that other element. So men and women aren't that different. You want a balance of the two things. Nobody wants a super pious chick that can never be sexy for them. That can, you know what I mean? And in the mm -hmm. same breath, women want that same sort of balance. So I think, you know, you don't need a dating coach to tell you that. Life should tell you that in general, that there has to be a balance. You can't be one too far on one extreme or the other, or in any sort of situation, it's going to be problematic. Okay. Now, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to those of you who are just joining us. We got the ever encompassing, um, you know, dynamic Irene Vet in the building. And we got a lot of people in the chat. Irene, now on the flip side, in YouTube, I've noticed in the particularly, and I don't know if you've noticed, but in the last um, two years, there's been a rise, Irene, of female YouTubers uh, who you would consider female dating coaches. However, there's a twist. These women are teaching women how to become quote unquote gold diggers. And what they teach these women in their live streams, which typically has anywhere from 500, 600, up to a thousand women sometimes, is tactics on how to manipulate men of means uh, so that they can quote unquote, secure the bag. Um, have you seen anything like that, Irene? Have you seen any of those videos? And what are your thoughts on female gold diggers women who are learning tactics on how to manipulate a men of means so they can secure the bag. Wow. Um, no, I've not seen any of those videos. <laughs> I really haven't. Um, but I'm going to go look for them now. Uh, what I will say is this. I think that, um, I think that there are two types of men and women in the world. There are women who think being attractive and getting their hands on men's money is the end all be all to living life as a woman. Um, and there are men who think that having sex with women um, and throwing them away is the end all be all to life as men. And I think both types of people are very sad and pathetic people. Um, I definitely think that, you know, it's natural as a woman not so much to want a guy with a lot of money, but at least a good work ethic. Do you know what I mean? That's going to make the most out of what he has. But I just don't like exploitive um, tactics, period. Not on the female side, not on the male side. I think it makes unhealthy people because, you know, I always say this, like, I wish I could take all dysfunctional people and send them to an island because these people wouldn't bother me so much if they weren't you know, intermingling with like healthy minded people. And so what you get is a genuine good person who runs into say a gold digger and then it colors their whole view on women, right? Because they keep running into these awful women. And the same thing with women, they, you know, run into men who only want them for sex and then you have a whole bunch of feminists, you know what I mean? Because their minds are twisted because they've run into a bunch of dysfunctional people who are, who are seeking the wrong thing. So I definitely disapprove of that. And, and I really wish that we could, like I said, take people who have these dysfunctional backwards attitudes about the opposite sex and move them out of society so the rest of us could keep functioning healthily. Unfortunately, we have to learn how to navigate around the foolishness and know the red flags of people who aren't worth crap so that they are only forced to interact with each other and the rest of us can, can kind of bypass them and know, and know who to deal with. It can be confusing when you have, you know, weirdos in a room. Do you know what I mean? Who do you know? How do you know who to go with? Uh, I got moderators. Please get on your job, man. Uh, don't don't make me get on your job for you. You know what? Well, I, I hate that. The, you know, you know what they said, Irene? They said, what the fuck is this? Talking white? No, it's talking proper. It's talking the king's English. Why is it that every time uh, people who have some sense about them and, and talk proper English, we're considered talking white? Doesn't that that that, that kind of doesn't 
uh, I'm sorry, Irene, that, that kind of just irks me, man. The fact that only we do this as, as, as black folks. Um, Irene, let me ask you this. You have one particular YouTuber, and I call her 7-Eleven. Um, she teaches women that they should disregard love and, and just go for money first. And when she makes videos, you can tell that um, she's miserable. And the reason I bring this up is there was one video about her where it was her birthday, and she had tears in her eyes. And through the whole video, she's telling women, get the money, blah, blah, blah. But I was thinking to myself, here you are on your birthday doing a live stream with tears in your eyes. My question to you, Irene, is do you think that the fact of the way that society's built now that has empowered women to be free, empowered women to be bolder when it comes to obtaining education and being in the workplace, that there are women that instead of being like you, right, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman, they rather just uh, lay up on some dude's house and, and just be a gold digger? Do you think that's why these women want the easy way? What's your opinion on that? Um, so I think that, I think there's an attack on the family, right? And I don't have a problem with women being in the home. I think ideally women would be in the home, especially because we have children. It's ideal for us to be able to nurse them, to be with them in their beginning years of life, to homeschool even. And so that's very expensive if somebody doesn't stay at home. Um, so I think if it's done in a healthy way, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's no gold digging about that. I think um, traditional gender roles and just family in general, there's a huge attack on that. But um, as far as simply just looking at a man for as their meal ticket, I think that that could be problematic for sure. Um, again, this is hard for me because I come from a traditional standpoint. I know women who literally live in their father's home until they get married and then they go into their husband's home. And so those are women who financial security does matter to their fathers and to them because they will be homemakers. And I think that's a healthy attitude um, toward having a woman in the home. I think that unhealthy attitude is simply targeting somebody with money in the hope that you can just be lazy. But I think a lazy woman is something that a man will know right off. If a woman is not bringing anything but her vagina and her physical appearance to the table, then I would argue that the men who end up in that situation have it coming. Like if she's not- Wait, wait, wait. Irene, can you please say that again? Can you please say that again? I said, if a woman is only bringing her physical appearance and her vagina to the table, then I think that the men who choose these women have it coming. You should have a higher standard for the women you're choosing. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, Irene. Keep no, it's okay. No, yeah, that's that's what I have to say. You should just have a higher standard for the women you're choosing. Um, okay. Yeah, you get what you you get what you buy. So. So, Irene, I gather you're not a feminist. Well. Depends on if you define feminist. I feel like I'm more of a traditional feminist and that I, I, I promote proper gender roles, women being able to nurse. You know, I definitely think, you know, women should be able to bring their children to the workplace. I did that um, at a point in time in my life because people can bring their dogs, um, things like that. But I'm not a modern feminist. I don't think men are evil. I'm not with the Me Too movement. I am not for women acting like men and being whores. I'm not overly concerned with, you know, financial equality with men and stuff like that. I'm a traditionalist. So I'm not a modern feminist, but I am a true feminist in that I, I believe in promoting femininity, womanhood, and all the things that come with that um, so that women can function in society as the way we're meant to. I mean, I think modern feminists have kind of hijacked that movement and turned it into just a bunch of foolishness, whoredom, man-hating, and stupidity. Okay. Uh, moderators, just keep putting Lotus on, on timeout. Um, <laughs> like I said, moderators, get on your job with Extreme Prejudice today. Uh, I'm tired of these trolls. Uh, anybody trolling, I'm sorry. We, we ain't got time for that today. You know what I mean? If you, if you, <laughs> okay, let's go. Um, sorry, Irene, you know, these, these trolls, they like to come out, you know, because they ain't got nothing else to do on a Saturday, I guess. Um, you you just brought up Me Too, and that was actually my next question. What are your thoughts on Me Too? And, you know, we're going to talk about Brett Kavanaugh in a second, but what are your thoughts on Me Too? And do you think that Bill Cosby is a victim of Me Too? Yes or no? 
Um, okay, so I have to say, I can't say much on the Bill Cosby thing because I don't really watch TV. And when I do report on things that are on in the media, uh, for my YouTube channel, I specifically research those topics because I don't read the newspaper, I don't watch TV, I don't listen to the radio. So um, I wasn't making uh, videos when that was going on, so I wasn't researching it, so I can't really speak on Bill Cosby um, at all. The Me Too movement in general, I will say that, um, I do believe that there are men who take advantage of women and that women have to be protected in those situations. But I think this so-called Me Too movement is a bunch of just bullshit. Um, there, it's turning into a climate where literally just because a woman, you know, is emotional or angry or, you know, says something happened to her, that it's just an automatic, she's telling the truth. And I think that's very, very dangerous to the 50% of our society that don't have vaginas. Like, you know, you shouldn't just be able, because you can be highly emotional when you're making your accusation, um, be able to ruin a person's life. And I just think this, you know, having, you know, just carte blanche to say anything and be believed, you know, and just the fact that you even choose to make an accusation is enough to, you know, call you a hero. That's like insane to me. I, I feel like, you know, we're, there has to be more to this life than that. Like we just, <laughs> We, we can't just start finger pointing and yelling really loud and expect, you know, to be believed. And that's kind of where it's come to. And if you say anything against it, especially if you're a man, then, you know, you're clearly advocating for the rapist, you're victim shaming, you're, you know, it just becomes very nasty. And, you know, you can't question anybody. Like, it just seems really bizarre to me, makes me pretty sick. And I feel really bad for men in this situation because it's one of these things where by virtue of having a penis, you can't even advocate for yourself. It mm -hmm. literally is going to take women pushing back against other women to stop this insanity because men, you guys don't even get a dog in this race. Um, if you dare to speak, you're going to be crushed. You're going to be, you know, you're toxic you know, you're with rape culture, you know, it just, you're likely to ruin your life just trying to defend your fellow man. So it's, it's a pretty scary movement. It's scary times right now. I'm very concerned for men ev everywhere. I'm very concerned for you guys. It's, 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 it's a hot mess to say the very least. Mm -hmm. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we got Irene Vet in the building. Welcome to Solo TV 84. Irene, um, you were one of the people that kind of got me, um, you know, paying attention to the Brett Kavanaugh situation. And I saw the hearing and I thought, it, I thought I was watching a reality show. I mean, what a clusterfuck, excuse my language. Um, did you watch the hearing of Kavanaugh or Miss Ford? And if so, what are your thoughts? Oh, you un yeah, unmute sorry, yourself. Yeah, I did watch the hearing. I made a special, uh, I made a special concession to watch that whole hearing and it was very mind numb numbing for me. Um, my thoughts on the Kavanaugh situation. I think she's a liar. I think she's a compulsive liar at that. Um, I really wasn't with like the whole song and dance she was doing. Like, you know, I just, I, I got sick of the whiny baby voice that she was making. Like you're 50 something years old. She would like crawl into herself. And then like, if she was challenged all of a sudden, she was very confident and could sit upright and could hold a conversation sensibly. She even had a little bit of snapback when she felt she was being challenged. I didn't like the fact that we had the, the hearing because it gave, you know, the people who just want to believe her, you know, to time to make speeches about how brave she was and this and that. Like, nobody's proven anything. She has no evidence. Nobody corroborates but, her story. But, but, I, but Irene, why would a woman who is highly decorated, two master's degrees from the UNC, she's got her doctorate from USC, I believe, why would she have to lie? I know, I know a police officer right now who's a scumbag. Why is he a scumbag? Do you know what I mean? Like, what does her degrees or her job have to do with anything? Absolutely that's, nothing. That's what they're saying on the left. So I'm just bringing that up. Well, I'm just saying, like, it, it, what does it have to do with anything? I mean, what is that dentist was raping women and getting them pregnant in his chair? He, he, had, he had a doctorate too, but he was a scumbag. She can't be a scumbag because she has a vagina. Like, I honestly, 
I'm not for people who go 30 years before they can even recall something happened to them because the story is changing. First, she, it was a repressed memory, right? Now yeah. it wasn't so repressed. It was affecting her everyday life all through college and stuff. You know, and then there's nobody can cooperate her story. She doesn't know when, she doesn't know where. I think she's mentally ill at best. I mean, that's what I saw watching that. I can't dig into weird people's minds and try to pull out all the reasons that they do the stuff that they do. But I'll tell you this. I feel that she's a compulsive liar because throughout that, you know, she she was lying about things and it wasn't even necessary to lie about them. So, you know, I picked on this on my channel. But, on a video but, of me. Go ahead. But, but Irina, I got to cut you off a second. Yeah. She went through a traumatic experience, and, and I know you said she's a liar, but she she had mentioned this in a in a therapy session with her husband and a, and a therapist back in 2012. And Brett Kavanaugh's name did come up. I mean, well, no, we, hold, no her let, therapist. Let me, let me finish, Irene. Hold on, let me finish real quick. Uh, wouldn't we? Uh, aren't we allowed to give her a shot of fairness because it was traumatic for her, and maybe it took her that long to finally actualize that trauma and be able to come to terms with it. Right. Um, no. So in the therapist notes, the therapist did not note Brett Kavanaugh's name, her husband, you know, the man she sleeps with that night. Mm -hmm. He's saying that she said that. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to need somebody that hasn't been having sex with her for the past few years to come forward and say something. I mean, what is he going to say? No, my wife's a liar. Um, also, <laughs> again, Clearly something has happened to her and something's wrong with her. I'm not gonna argue that. Is it what she's saying? I don't know. Like I said, I think that she's clearly mentally unstable in some way, but more importantly than this being 36 years old, almost 40 years old or anything like that, my big, big, big problem with her is that she's a compulsive liar. She lies about things there's no point to lie about. You know, and I picked on this, like I said, on a video I made on my channel, just about flying. It was a whole hoopla about the trauma of her having to fly and how, you know, she's so afraid of flying and things like that. Now, this isn't even rape we're talking about. This is just getting on a plane. She's a liar. Apparently, she flies places all year long. She flies for vacation. She flies to visit family. She's not scared of flying at all. If she can't even be honest about that, we're going to believe her about if somebody sexually assaulted her, held her down in a room on a bed somewhere. You know, when everybody she mentions denies the truth. So my thing is, if you can't be trusted with the little things, how are we going to trust you to ruin somebody's career? And mm. as far as hearing her, again, I can come with a compelling story all I want. But if mm. there's literally no evidence to go with it, all it is is a compelling story. I've got a compelling story for you right now. I think that um, Miss Bailey Ford is a nutcase. I think that she probably does numerous drugs. I think most psychotherapists are crazy. I mean, I've got a compelling story. Why, why is what I'm saying any less valid than what she's saying? I have no corroborating evidence. I have nobody mm -hmm. to back me up, but I feel strongly about it. You know, mm -hmm. so you guys might as well believe me too. She's nuts. Okay. Well, Irene, let me play devil's advocate. And for those who are just joining on, we got Irina Vett in the building, up and coming, controversial, dynamic YouTuber. Make sure y'all subscribe to Irene. I mean, let me play devil's advocate. Uh, Brett Kavanaugh mentioned he liked beer, uh, that he sometimes drank a lot of beer. However, he said that I've never blacked out or passed out. However, there's been some of his former Yale classmates who have come out and say, no, Brett used to get it in. So you're saying, why would Miss Ford lie? Why would Brett lie about drinking beer until he passed out? I mean, is he credible? Well, did any of his form? I don't, I never heard any of his former classmates say they saw him pass out, just that he drank. So, you know, um, I, I drink. Am I a rapist? You know what I mean? Like, I drink. Have, does that mean that I'm also capable of sexual assault? Like, I don't see the parallel. Do you know what I mean? So, everybody that's in a bar on Saturday night, this today, tonight, everybody, all of you who go to a bar are a possible sexual predator because you drink. Like there's no correlation there. Him right, drink. Right, but but what, I, what I'm saying is what you're saying is you're saying Ms. Ford is a compulsive liar. And so as devil's advocate, I'm saying, well, Brett Kavanaugh is saying he never drank until he blacked out or he was evasive with that question when Senator Klobuchar asked him. Um, I mean, what I guess the, the, the point I'm trying to make is 
if you are deeming Miss Ford not credible because of lying, can't we say the same for Mr. Kavanaugh? Or excuse yeah. me, Judge Kavanaugh. No, I don't think so because he didn't lie. He did say, say that he drank. I think what he did is he got irritated with the line of questioning. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, she came at him, he answered her question. She said, he said, I don't drink to excess. She said, what is excess? He said, you know, he's not gonna make a judgment on that because excess is different for everybody, right? I'm five foot two and a woman. Mm -hmm. Excess for me is not excess for him. So he didn't wanna answer the question, which was smart of him. So he said, whatever the charts say is excess. Whatever, whatever's going to have you arrested if you get breathalyzed, that's excess. She okay. wasn't happy with that. So she pushed. So, so you don't drink till you black out. And so he snapped at her. And I mean, right, what do you want from this man? He's not a freaking robot. He said, do you drink till you black out? Right. And honestly, good for him. Like, it's, it's getting, like, people want him to act like he's some sort of robotic man. And he's just a human being. He's been mm -hmm. accused of a lot, not just with this woman running a sex trafficking ring where they drugged and gang raped women. His wife is being, you know, threatened. Her life is being threatened. His little girls know about this. I, what I saw was a human being who was over the BS. That's what I saw. He got okay. sick of her line of questioning. He didn't lie. He just didn't let her bait him. And when she asked him an absurd question after he answered it, like the- You don't, you don't think he was combative at times and a little yeah. bit snappy and rude? I'm thinking good for him, he was combative. I mean, what the heck? Is he supposed to just be, you know, I mean, what what do we want from him? This man well, has I mean, been cool and handling his- The judge, um, I guess some people think he was a little bit too emotional at times. Um, which, well, I don't think he was emotional. I mean, professional. Yeah, well, here's here's the thing. It's easy to cast judgment on somebody, but until you've endured weeks and weeks and weeks of increasingly more ridiculous accusations against you. Like I said, at this point, he is a um, per a man who drugs women in mass and gang rapes them, right? He's a sexual assaulter. He's waving his penis in people's faces. Then there, don't, that's just, those are just the ones that they wanna give credit to. Let's not even forget all the other ones that have come out. You know, I don't, I think he's a human. He's not mm -hmm. superhuman. I think people start to think like because somebody's a judge or because they're a police officer or because, you know, they're a doctor or because that they, they cease to be human beings and they're just supposed to be impervious and completely unbothered by anything that happens. He's still a human being and it has to be a lot to six, to sit there, you know, minus breaks, what, five hours? and go through this, to do interviews for it, to have your name dragged through the mud, to be told that he he, know, he recognizes he may never work again if this doesn't blow over. Like, mm -hmm. you know, this is a serious situation. And I think the expectation that he should be emotionless and that the minute a man shows a little bit of annoyance or a little bit of clap back to this absurdity that, oh my gosh, can you believe this? He's a judge, he's emotional. They know he's a person. Emotional would have been slapping her. Right. Mm -hmm. Emotional would have been throwing a chair. That would have been over emotional. I think to show anger, to show frustration, to show irritation is human and normal. And it's all we could ask of any person. Okay. We, we can't expect him to do something you wouldn't even be able to do in that situation. That's just stupid and ridiculous. It's easy to throw stones when you want to make a dumb point. OK, now, hold on, um, Irene. We got man of tomorrow on the building shout out to man of tomorrow he brings up an excellent rebuttal he says losing your cool on the stand isn't an innocent man thing to do though how do you respond to that you know what this is so i was actually thinking about i'm glad he asked that question i was actually thinking about this so um i work i worked for many many years uh assisting uh really really wealthy men and a lot of times I would have to go to their homes to do the work. So one of the gentlemen, I went to his home uh, to pre-prep uh, some documents he needed pre-prepped. His wife, she spoiled me, you know, made me all kinds of food and things like that. So somebody had been on their computer looking at things inappropriate. And so mind you, I have known these men for a long time and I worked with them after this. And so um, the one who referred me came to me and said, oh, you know, so-and-so said, you know, his computer is not working right. Were you looking at anything, this and that? And I got mad. I, I literally got irritated. I got irritated because what the hell? Are you freaking kidding me? Like my integrity has never been in question. And I'm pissed off that you even stepped to me with this. 
And he said the same thing to me. I kid you not, I'm not making this up. He goes, well, if you haven't done anything wrong, da da da. I said, I'm mad that you guys even had this conversation without me. Mm. That you guys were even sitting around talking about me in this manner. I'm even pissed about that. And no, I didn't do it. And I didn't do it. You know what? Sometimes when you're accused of doing something, especially when it's out of your character, when you're not the person to do it. I was just joking with my man last night. You know, he had to take a business trip and uh, he was over a pastor, friends of his house. And, you know, at the end he whispered, I love you too, babe. And he got off the phone and I texted him and I was like, are you with a woman? Why do you have to whisper? I love you. And he got irritated <laughs> with me too. And I had to be like, dude, I'm just playing. Do you know what I mean? Was he with the woman? No, he was really with the pastor. So getting irritated because you're falsely accused does not equal, you know, here's the thing. People are not all the same. We all react differently to things. We tend to judge other people by how we would behave in that situation. But you know what? That person's not you. And I think it's perfect, per perfectly reasonable to get irritated or mad if you're not doing something wrong or if it's out of your character or if you would expect people would have a higher um, regard for you as a person because of how you carry yourself to be irritated and upset at the situation, especially when it's literally ruining your life especially mm. in that situation. Fair point. Fair point, Irene. Fair point, and, and I'm glad you brought that up. Now, Irene, let, let's get into some tea, okay? <laughs> now now we're going to get into some fun stuff. You um, you made a controversial video. Uh, well, you made two, but the first one was titled uh, Midtown, you know, Males Going Their Own Way, Ask a Black Girl. That's why the stream is titled Ask a Black Girl, because I'm speaking with a black girl or black woman. Um, and in the video, and, and let's keep it real, Irene, you sounded a, a tad condescending in regards to Midtow, even sarcastic at times. My question is, do you think Midtow don't have any validity with their claims that marriage tends to benefit women, more so especially in regards to divorce, alimony, and child support rulings? And since you've made the video, have you done more research on Midtow? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Take a deep breath, Irene. Take a deep Let breath. Let me say this. First and foremost, um, something people don't know about me is that I'm never joking. I'm always serious. Even when I tell jokes, like I'm actually incapable of not being serious. So sometimes I say serious things in a joking manner. And um, I don't want to, um, I don't want to conflate the two. There are a lot of things, and this is what's really strange. Um, yes, yes, Irene is dating a black man. I don't know why that matters. You guys are, are so worried about who Irene is dating. She's not dating you, so why do you care? Okay, I'm sorry, Irene. I got it. I don't know if you see the chat, but it seems like a lot of the men are, are concerned about who you're with. I mean, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Keep going, Irene. Um, so... Here's the thing. What's really funny is that um, in theory, I agree with a lot of what they are saying. Um, however, I have no respect for them. So it's kind of like, you know, how how men, they support prostitution if they like buying prostitutes, but they may not respect the prostitute. That's sort of the relationship I have with these men, these these guys that are part of the, the movement. You know, I respect you know, I, I don't respect them, but I totally support their movement just because I'm about dysfunctional people staying away from functional people, just period. And I equate, you know, their movement to the feminists. I feel like the feminine, they are to men what feminists are to women. Just a bunch of people that really need to pull their self out of the dating pool because they're screwing stuff up for those of us who know how to function correctly. Um, and I don't want to conflate the two issues. Um, the, the situation with Me Too, the situation with marriage, like I said, I'm 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 against any group that is that that wants to break down the family structure. Okay, so if they're not about healthy male female relationships and intact families, so that we can raise healthy children, then I'm not about them. Okay, I, I don't like dissenters. I don't like those kinds of things. Okay, Irene, you still there? Yeah, yeah, one second. Okay. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we got Irene Avet in the building, uh, up and coming YouTuber. And uh, yeah, uh, make sure y'all smash the like button. Uh, Super chat is enabled. And right now, currently, we're 
you know, talking about Irene's controversial Mittal video. You you good, Irene? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Um. So yeah, I feel like the, any disruption in like healthy family structures, those are things that I do definitely have a problem with. And more than that, I feel like I feel like you know some of these things are our lack of of accountability, like self accountability. And I think that's another reason I don't really respect these men because this is what this is honestly what I feel. I feel like you well, pick a woman mm -hmm. out of base reasons. You don't vet the woman that you're with. Then she brings you through the ringer and you want to be mad at all womankind. Not mad at your bad decision, but mad at all womankind because there's always some red flags. So if you choose to ignore them, that's not my problem. And I think a lot of these men, because they love to troll my videos, um, I think a lot of them really confuse the fact that I refuse to sympathize with them or, you know, pat them on their back with, you know, with me thinking that a lot of these behaviors are okay. No, I just don't think the two things are related. I don't think you taking a dysfunctional route, it's sort of like, let's say I get raped, okay? I genuinely get raped by a man. And then every man after that, I just mace him in the face. You don't have to do anything. You just walk by me and I start macing you in the face. Why? Because you've got a penis and your penis means that you're a problem. And that's how these men are. They, they've had some bad experiences. And so they've gotten into their feelings, you know, and they don't like women. And, and, and I think it's really weird because they don't even have organization. If you look at my comment section, and I've talked to so many of them, both reasonable but mostly unreasonable, they're everywhere from I'm going to trick women and have sex with them to I just don't even need women, which to me is makes you borderline gay. And I don't like the gays either. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, you know, or, you know, I'll just go and buy surrogate, you know, woo, you know, use an artificial womb somewhere. And I'm like, OK, really? Like this technology, first of all, isn't even freaking there yet. OK, second of all, where are you going to get the eggs from? Like a woman's got to come into place in some point of time or I'll just go pay some foreign woman to have my baby, you know, and then raise a baby without a mother figure like these people, their minds are dysfunctional. And I can't with I can't with I cannot with these broken people. These men have been chewed up and spit out by the feminist agenda and they are broken. They are screwed up. I support them going their own way because God forbid they reproduce and pass this retardation on anybody. But I don't respect them. I, I don't respect them. I don't respect them. And I, it's, I'm not picking on them because they're men. I don't respect the feminist either. Well, I don't respect either group. Okay, they're so both messed up in the head. Irene, let me get this right. Because you're saying that Midtowns then are the, the male version of feminists, correct? Okay. Yes. Um, now, some people in the chat are saying you're being disingenuous. Um, and I know you got a lot of comments. People were commenting. Some of them uh, trying to you know, set you straight. Some of them were just ad hominem attacks. My favorite one was, um, I, I'm sorry, Irene, I got to say this, but one of the comments was, she's just a trap thought. I, I, I like that. For some reason, that made me laugh. Um, do you think that maybe you have miscategorized Midtowns because um, your, um, your initial video made it sound like these were incels, meaning uh, men who, um, are in celibate in, in regards to being able to get women and, and whatnot. You think maybe you have mythos confused with men who are involuntarily celibate? No, I think they're doing it on purpose. I think they don't like women. I can't. Here's the thing. So many of them crawl under my videos. I don't even let all of the comments go through because some of them are literally like sexually violent in nature and stuff like that. So uh, like literally the comments you guys see under those videos are not even all the comments I get. And I'm pretty liberal. They talk crap about me and I let those comments stand. It doesn't bother me at all. But if you I'm going to tell you what I have found out of their own mouths. There are a handful of them who are genuinely just good dudes. You know what I mean? And then the, like 90% of them are psychopaths. 90% of them <laughs> are literally, and, and they're also hyper emotional. And here's the thing. I don't like feminism in men. I don't. You know, I, I said this, you know, when I was talking uh, to the advice show on O'Shea's channel and when I did my interview, 
See, how I know that they're effeminate and see, I don't respect masculine women and I don't respect effeminate men. I don't like people who don't, who, who start stepping out of gender roles. Like we have enough of this chaos going on with the people who want 50,000 genders and stuff. I need y'all to, to get with the damn program. When you start acting effeminate to the point where your emotionality, your emotion is running you, you are acting like a woman. This is not me trying to pick on you because you don't want to date women. This is not me saying you can't get women. I have a video I'm going to be putting up soon with a Democrat. And she said something when I talked about people hitting the wall. She's like, if if handicapped people can get sex, anybody can. So I, I think we all can get somebody. I don't think these men are celibate because no women want them. There's a hoe out there for every man. Trust me. Five okay. or ten. You can have sex. You can get women. What I am saying is that they are dysfunctional. They are dysfunctional. They are hyper emotional. The fact that they are under my video, a five minute satirical video, so emotional means that they are unstable. You are unstable. Well, but but, but Irene, in, 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 one, in, in fairness, you were calling them losers and said that they should wear T-shirts so that way they're able to differentiate themselves from other people in society. They are losers. This is this is what I'm consistent with this. You are a loser. You are. If you are a man, you have failed as a man. If you have not managed to figure out how to pick a woman who knows how to carry herself in a way that is submissive to you, if you do not know how to lead a household, if you are so frustrated with your inability to interact with the opposite sex in a way that is healthy, then you have failed as a man. Just like if you are a woman who is incapable of being led, who is incapable of taking instruction, who is incapable of embracing submission, you have failed as a woman. I am not with these people who don't know how to carry themselves appropriate to their gender, wanting kudos for their behavior. You get no kudos from me. That's okay. not cute. This is the okay. problem with society now. That's why you have these little kids confused about if they're men or women, because there's too many blurring of the darn gender lines. There's too many confused people who want to create their own ways of doing things. I, like I said in my second video about them, I am a traditionalist and I don't like dissenters. And here's the thing, the fact that they're so in their feelings that I don't like them is a problem. Why do you even care? You don't like women anyway. So if I don't like you, what do you care? You don't even like us. You don't want anything to do with us. So my opinion of the sex that you don't want anything to do with about you guys shouldn't matter. You guys are girls. Notice that they make videos on me and I thumbs up their video. I oh, might they even make go videos show on them you? Some love. They huh? did? They, they oh, made videos yeah. about you? I just literally was on what red pill something or other. I don't know. Ghost something. I don't know. I can't. You MGTOW people know who he is. I literally just gave him the big up on his video. I said, dude, you're awesome because I'm not a girl to this extent that you guys are. You're more feminine than me in your behavior. I don't care what he says about me. Mm. No, no, Irene, hold on. Now, somebody brought up a point. Maybe what you confuse for being hyper emotional is men who are hurt. And so men, we deal with hurt different than women. And so maybe this is how men are, you know, manif are manifesting their hurt is by, you know, going on, on videos, on midtown videos, talking about it. Because let's be real, Irene, and I, I know you might think this is some pussyfied shit, but men, when we, when, when women break up with us or when we're hurt, nobody wants to hear that shit. If my boy called me right now and said, oh, yo, dog, my girl left me, dog, I don't want to hear that shit because we as men, we're taught that we're tough, we're, we're, we're strong. And so for men, maybe Midtown is an outlet for them to vent emotionally in regards to being hurt. Ever looked at it that way? I think if that's the case, they need to get their crap together. Here's the thing. There are two sexes, the female sex and the male sex. The female sex, we have our hormones that fluctuate literally every couple of weeks. Every couple of weeks. And so we get emotional a lot. We are known for our emotionality. You can't even, that's probably why they can't lead a household. You can't lead a household if you're going to be emotional too. We both can't be emotional. That's probably why they're failing with women. Men are supposed to be more in control of their emotions. I'm not saying that you have to be emotionless, but you can't be hyper emotional. Your emotion can't be the equivalent of a woman's emotion. That's problematic, like to the extreme. Okay. Now, Irene, um, two things. Uh, first question, 
Uh, there were a lot of comments in the second video that you want men to be on the plantation um, in regards to, you know, to fund your lifestyle so that men are will continue to get married and be uh, financially raped by the government and divorce court. By the way, it has been proven that 50% of divorces are initiated by women, as well as child support, which in 2018 is kind of outdated. Um, what is your take on that, Irene, that you are, as they call, and, and one, and once again, Irene, I'm not trying to attack you, but they, they called you a bunch of names, but you are trad thought. You're pushing traditionalism as a front, but really you're just trying to push uh, the feminist agenda in your own way. Um, well, first of all, I go back to if you aren't marrying women or being with women, then how I feel shouldn't matter, right? Because you're not a part of this. I'm not even talking to you. Mm, All right. Okay. So that second video I made was to a man who had a sympathy for them and asked me to take their their claim seriously. I don't care if they don't want to reproduce or deal with women and they don't want to deal with women. So they shouldn't care what I think. I'm one of the ones y'all don't want to be bothered with. So it shouldn't matter what any woman thinks of your movement, first and foremost. Secondly, as far as 50 percent of uh, marriages ending in divorce, that means that 50 percent of them succeed. So you can be a, half, a glass half empty. Again, this is your detrimental attitude toward things and your poor picking of things. And, and as far as um, my desire for traditionalism, well, clearly you people aren't traditionalists. You can't even manage a, a household. You can't even keep your marriages together. And, and I'm sick of these men. And, and they seem to have this opinion that they're so great, that all men are wonderful. No, all men oh, aren't great. Oh, I, mean, I saw a bunch of comments of Midtown millionaires. One guy said he- uh, If he's a millionaire, why is he under my channel? Think he's a liar. These are, these are internet thugs. We don't know. He probably lives in a shack. I mean, these people are literally, I have millions of dollars. I, people are asking for my autographs, da, da, da. <laughs> then how do you have time to be under my video? You really shouldn't care what I think. What the hell? What did you come under here to tell your life story for? You're a liar. That's what it says to me. You're a liar. I'm not talking about what's in my bank account because I don't have anything to prove. So you know what I mean? Like I, I, the nameless, faceless people on the internet don't matter to me. You won't even put up a real face. You won't even make a real video showing your own face to, to combat me. You're hiding behind your computer and then going to talk crap about me like I'm supposed to be intimidated or worried. All I see is that you are a very beta person, not a beta male, a beta human being. They A lot of them were like, I called them beta males. No, I said I can tell a beta person, male or female, from a mile away. I can tell a dysfunctional, broken person from a mile away. You don't have to have a penis for that. Beta people come both in male and female form. And I don't like betas. I don't like y'all. You guys irritate me. You muddy up the pool. You don't want to get your stuff together. It's irritating. It's, it's obnoxious and annoying. And you're too concerned about everything everybody says. That's why you guys are under my video throwing a tantrum. I'm not even looking at the chat, but I bet you guys are being little bitch babies in the, in the chat room. Too. You can't stand anybody. You cannot stand anybody not to co-sign what you're doing. If you're so sure in yourself, my opinion of you doesn't matter. Just like your opinion of me doesn't matter. You see, I won't stop and I haven't changed my opinion on you guys, despite your whining and your tantrums and your bullying, because I stand by where I am and I don't need to troll you and come to your channel and whine every time you guys make a video to feel how I feel. So why don't you get on and actually go your own way? You haven't gone anywhere. You're still here. You're still interacting. All of you guys are always talking about my vagina, how it looks, how it smells, whose penis has been in it. But you don't like vagina. It's it's very confusing. You don't even know where you stand. Mm. I, you know, I again, I feel Ooh. like I feel about the feminists. I don't like the feminists either. I think these are dysfunctional, broken people. And I only respect, I can wait, wait. only... I, Irene, I don't mean to yeah. cut you off because you, you, I know you're going on a tangent, but you keep using that word dysfunctional. Um, how would you say mentals are dysfunctional if they're opting out of marriage? I mean, they're simply opting out of marriage and traditional relationship. So how is that dysfunctional? Or, or are there other examples that you can give? Yeah, you know what? Let me. I'm going to take a really serious stance on this. Okay. Like I said, there is an attack on the family structure, and this attack is coming from many different directions. It is coming through homosexuality, homosexuality and transgenderism. It is coming through the abortion agenda 
um, making women feel that they do not want to reproduce to the point where they're willing to kill their own children. It is coming through feminism, where women are told to turn against men, and if they do deal with men, to deal with them on a whorish level, but then murder any child that is conceived while they're whoring themselves out. It is coming through this MGTOW movement, where you have men abandoning traditional roles. I don't care what angle it's coming from. It is all dysfunctional and wrong. Our society is so twisted and wrecked because of the fact that individuals, and you, what you guys don't realize about conditioning, is the people who want our family structures because the family is the core of society, those people who want to see that destroyed, they don't care what movement you join. And don't be in the comments, MGTOW is not a damn movement. I'm going to call it a movement if I want, okay? They don't care what group you link yourself to. They don't care what acronym you grab. As long as you are part of the destruction of healthy familial structure. As long as you are part of destroying the fabric of society, that's all they care about. And I am against all individuals who are wanting to participate in that system. We have to stop this. The destruction of the family is causing the destruction of our society. It is causing our children to come up confused. They don't know their gender. They, they cannot carry on healthy human relationships. You have men who, who don't know how to lead, women who don't know how to submit. It's utter chaos. And it's chaos because of people like the MGTOWs, people like the feminists, people like the gays, people like the transgenders, everybody on freaking Tumblr. Like, I, there's a list. There's a list of you guys that I can't stand, just to be honest. Okay, welcome to Solo TV 84. Uh, is my mic working still? Whoo! Because Irene is burning it up right now, you know what I'm saying? Um, welcome to Solo TV 84. And uh, we got Irina Vett in the building today. Um, Irina, I got a, two more questions, unless the chat has more. But first, I want to shout out Man of Tomorrow for his donation earlier. Thank you, sir. That will go into the uh, beer fund. By the way, um, I will be going out tonight to a, a modeling event. I'll be uh, doing my photography and videography thing. Um, so shout out to that. Um, and also, shout out to Edward Anderson for the donation. Um, Irene, number one, I'm not a mid-tow, so I'm not offended. The reason I don't show my face is because I'm an, I'm wearing a wife beater, and I'm not trying to scare you. Um, secondly, um, Irene, I, uh, uh, a famous YouTuber, I won't mention his name, he says that, well, he's not a famous YouTuber, but there are some people, and I've heard this more than once, that believe that mid -tow is a PSYOP by the powers that be, so minority men, uh, you know, men such as um, the, the refugees who've been going all over Europe, like Germany, can get access to white women. I mean, you see refugee men on Germany, they are running through these white women, and black men can get access to Becky. Um, what is your take on that theory or conspiracy? Getting access to Becky? Yes. That Midtow is, uh, is a PSYOP so that minority men, black men such as myself, we can have access to Becky, Nicole, Emily, and that white men will leave them alone. So that way, um, the the white lineage will not die, and, and they can reproduce with uh, stronger seed and blah blah blah. You know, a bunch of other stuff. Um. Yeah. Anybody who's ever watched any of my content knows that I just believe there's one race. We're all human beings. Just period. And so. If, if 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 people who look like me want access to, you know, to pillar people, then I don't care. I, I don't care what people, you know, I, I don't care what color person you choose to be with. I, I just, I care that you're healthy when you're doing it, you know? I think that's more important. And I think the side conspiracy theories, like, you know, people get so caught up in these distractions. That's why I have a, a, a problem with all these alphabet committee people. Like, you guys are so distracted from like what's really going on in the world. Like you think what you're doing is so important and it's so not like there are bigger fish to fry than, than tantrums over who hurt your feelings or who's trying to sleep with who, like, this is all a distraction. That's why I, I flip and hate media. Like I just, I can't, I can't stand it. This is why I hate the augmented reality of the internet because these people really think a whole bunch of people think like, you know, your environment is augmented so that you meet up with other stupid people to keep you distracted from all the things that really matter. And we cannot progress as, as people because everybody is caught up in their little side retardation, you know, movements. 
issues, things that are completely irrelevant. So, you know, if black guys are trying to get access to Becky, I could give two craps. Like it, it, it doesn't matter. You know, it, at least make sure that you're functional and she's functional and, and you guys can produce some functional children because at the end of the day, the dysfunction is more hurtful than the color of the person you crawl into bed with. Okay. Um, so somebody in the chat, and this is an interesting question, but in your definition, Irene, what is feminism? I'm just curious myself as well. My definition or the con the 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 current definition of feminism. Um yes, your definition and what you deem to be the current definition. Yeah. So um when I look at modern feminists, I have I have some big problems with them because there are, there are real issues facing women today and it's not our battle with men. Um we're not in a battle with men. I'm not a man. I'm not going to try to compare myself to a man. I don't need to be equal to a man. I feel men and women are equally valuable, but I think men are, we're not equal in authority and we shouldn't be. And so I, I, I feel like modern feminists are very misguided in that attempt. Um, we can't function like you guys. Our bodies aren't made like you. We're just different creatures. Um, and so I think they're very lost when they take that direction. Now, with that said, as, as a woman who really does love women, I things that break my heart that I feel like if feminists really cared about women, they would put they would put strength behind is to to lessen promiscuity in women, to tell women to be chased until marriage because we can get pregnant, because abortion does wreck our body, to encourage women to embrace nursing and carrying a child and have a healthy view of the female body and what we're made to to do, which is to produce children, to not hate that or feel it's oppressive, because that's how women view ourselves now. They feel they view pregnancy as oppressive, marriage to a man as oppressive. Um, following their husband to be oppressive. So just restoring women to understanding their, the beauty that it is to be a woman and, and accepting that. Um, I feel true feminism is, you know, I knew a government worker who had to go pump her milk in a bathroom for her baby. I, I just, I can't even imagine. That should not happen. It should not be that you have to be in a toilet feeding your baby or, or pumping milk for your child. You know, if you want to get behind a cause, get behind that. Every human being on this planet came from a woman's womb. So there are things that we need as women that have nothing to do with men, that have everything, that, you know, sanitary care for women. We bleed every month, but there are poor women everywhere who have nothing to catch the blood. That shouldn't be that way. That's a necessity of our sex something that we should all have access to. I think those are feminist causes. And notice none of those things have anything to do with men or our equality to men. And so I think feminists are very misguided and they don't care about women. If they cared about women, they wouldn't be telling us to go whore ourselves out. If they cared about women, they wouldn't be trying to turn us against men. Men who we depend on. We depend on you know, as our life partners, we depend on you guys because you're stronger, you're bigger, you're our leaders, you protect us. You guys check each other. There are bad men out there. And you know who checks them? Other men. We're not in a position to do Who's that. checking the women, Irene? We Well, here's the thing. Women can self-correct, but men are our authorities. Do you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So as a woman, it's my job to be a good example to other women, to correct other women, but ultimately is men to be authority over all of us. And this is what I mean about the breakdown in social hierarchy, just to go to the MGTOW people. You know what the problem really is? It's the breakdown in our social hierarchy and the sexes. That is the problem. If the sexes operated as they should, then a lot of these movements wouldn't even need to happen. Mm. Now, Irene, I'm glad you brought that up because I was just going to mention this. Let's talk solutions because we live in a what I like to call thought culture, right? And you mentioned it yourself. Thoughtness, you know, or as you mentioned, the act of whoredom is what's being promoted in the media. Kim Kardashian is now looked at as a as an icon. And 20 years ago, hell, even in the late 90s, there's no way that Kim Kardashian would have been promoted as an icon the way she is now. Um, Irene, you mentioned dating coaches are not the solution. You mentioned Midtow is not the solution. Feminism is not the solution. So in 2018, and I know what you're saying sounds ideal with getting back to the gender roles, but I think we have opened up Pandora's box with now we've got over 100 different genders. Uh, what is the solution now, Irene? Let's talk solutions, because I know you're about that. Yeah, I'm very solution oriented. 
Um, I think the first step is to really step away from media. I tell people on my channel all the time, I literally just made a video on this. If that means not even watching my channel, then please do. Turn off your television, turn off your radio, walk away from the newspaper and just spend some months alone so that you can even get to know what you really think. Because right now you're so influenced by all of the consumption of media that honestly, you're really not even in touch with your own feelings. A lot of a lot of times people hear when I talk and they've not heard things like that before, or they feel like I haven't polarized my thinking enough, so it's confusing to them because she seems to be on two sides or things like that. No, I think for myself. I'm not going by a narrative and I encourage other people to reach that place as well. And then also, I honestly feel like we have to know when to separate ourselves from dissenters. I'm not pro dissenters. I think it's really important that people who function in a healthy, rational way, that we start to interact with each other, that we date each other, that we socially organize with each other so that we can at least have a pool of healthy people. All of the unhealthy people are doing it. Heck, the MGTOW people are socializing with each other. The feminists are socializing with each other. The gays are socializing with each other. The transgenders are socializing with each other. Those gender freaks are socializing with each other. Why can't those of us that are healthy do that? and isolate ourselves from these pockets of weirdos. We can't fix everybody, and I'm not trying to convert everybody to sense, because some people are just lost. But what we can do is keep a pool going where we have healthy, functional people still interacting with each other. Because as it stands, the corruption in society is so deep that we are, we are literally watching, watching humanity fragment around us. I, we just, we can't go on like this. We will self-destruct if we don't get to know our minds, step away from corporate media, and restore the proper values that kept humanity strong for so long. Mm. And, and while we're at it, get the heck off of the racist bandwagon. It's it's so antiquated. It's so dysfunctional. Um, it's so divisive. Hmm. Ladies and I, y'all subscribe to her. With that being said, for those who are like, like, but I'm sorry for the so very excited for my uh, uh, waiver form, so I will not be me too. Uh, <laughs> Irene, is there any, um, Thing that you wanted to address uh, that we didn't get to address. One thing I do want to do, I do want to do a correction. Uh, shout out to Kevin Samuels. He actually said it's 80% of women who initiate divorces, not 50. Um, Irene, is there anything you wanted to talk about that we didn't get to speak up on or any final words? Yeah, I just have some final words. I just want to say that um, just, and this kind of ties into the 80% of women that initiate divorces, maybe some of those women needed to initiate a divorce. All men aren't angels. You know what I mean? Just like all women aren't angels. Um, I think it's very important that we are calculated about how we move through the world, that we're responsible with our bodies, that we're responsible in picking partners, that we choose to value ourselves and to value each other. Um, and when we do that, then we can avoid a lot of these pitfalls. Um, and more than anything, I think it's very important that we learn to deal with our pain, deal with disappointment, um, and know that no group of people is any one way. All men are not evil. All women are not evil. No group of people is just inherently bad. There are bad people in every group. And you need to be on your guard on your guard so that you can seek out in romantic and just general relationships, healthy, productive relationships and, and, and have a half, a glass half full kind of attitude. If you have a negative attitude towards life or situations, you will attract negativity. You mm -hmm. really, really will. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I agree yeah. with that. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have Irina Vett in the building. Um, Irene, I'm, I'm, last question. When are you going to start doing live streams on your own, girl? Because you you have a lot of good stuff to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, are you planning on doing that in the future soon? Or 
Yeah, I've been thinking about it. I just, I'm, I'm not sure how I want to go about it. There's, like I said, there's a lot of things I want to do with my channel that I'm just not quite doing yet because I just want it to be right. And I think I want to introduce some more content before I do and kind of get an idea of, um, you know, what people I would want on there, but I don't know, hopefully soon, hopefully in the next, in the next few months, I'll, I'll get my mind together enough to know how I want to proceed with that. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we got Irina Vett in the building. Um, make sure you guys subscribe to her. For those of you who are watching the playback, her channel will be in the description. I have to go. I got to get ready for this modeling event. You know me. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully I don't get me too tonight. Uh, so I'll be recording everything. I got my waivers handy. And with that being said, uh, we're out. Peace. Bye-bye. I love it. I love it.